All right, so we have finished the base color layer, or at least we've done quite a bit on the base color layer. We can see that if we just turn off the sketch, and all of this is base color, it fills up most of the background. There's still some blank space, right? But not so much that it takes away from the image. And there might be little adjustments you make to the base color after you've worked on it a little while. And it's always good to take some time and look back at things. So I'm using my custom brush here. If it's going kind of slow, make sure you save your work, Command S. So we're working at high resolution and I have a lot of other Photoshop programs open. And then I want to close any other programs I don't need. Because that all takes running memory. All right. It can be helpful to work on your base colors just as I'm finishing these up. Oh, it's going a little too slow for me. Really slow. It can be helpful to turn off your sketch and just look at your reference. But you need a brush that responds to you, of course. So I'm going to um, save it and then reset it up. And even though it's, it's high resolution, 16 by 20 by 350 pixels per inch, um, so far, because I'm creating everything digitally, it's only 268 megabytes. You know, so all this is empty pixel space. So let me close these. Let me, let me close Photoshop. It will remember my brush because I've used it and saved something with it. And let me reset these up. And I don't need to save this brush anymore. So if Photoshop's going slow, save your work. Let's restart it. And I'm going to do something I don't usually do uh, just to help everyone understand how important setting up your digital painting is. I'm going to restart Photoshop with all its default settings and then show you how to set it up for painting. And it's good that we're closing it because if it's taking this long to close, then it's having having some issues. In fact, I'm glad I saved the work because it's not responding, so I'm going to force quit it. All right, and that's because I had, I had those files open for quite a while. All right, so now I'm gonna open Photoshop, but while I do it, I'm gonna hold down Command, Option, Shift, and Tab. It's a four key shortcut. And what that does, I keep them held down while it's opening. It's going to clear or ask me if I want to clear to its default settings as soon as it opens. <laughs> now, if a tool isn't working correctly, so you see you get this prompt, delete the Adobe Photoshop settings file, yes. Those are all the kind of custom things you've done. It's like getting a clean internet browser that doesn't remember your history. Especially on shared computers, that can be very helpful because you want to know what all the defaults are. And then there's a few defaults that I change right at the beginning. And most importantly for digital painting, you want to give yourself a lot of history states. So it remembers not just 50 steps back, which is the new default for Photoshop 2018, but around 500 states back. Because you can do 500 brush strokes within about 10 minutes. And if you accidentally did those on the wrong layer or something, you could have really messed things up. So you might appreciate going back in your history. See, everything, all that old stuff it was holding in its memory is now gone, which is, which is nice in the running memory. So I'm going to open up my file, assignment 9. But bef well, I'll go ahead and open that up. Sure enough, I'm going to set up my, my working space for painting. So first thing you can do is go to Window, 
once you have a file open and you go to the workspace and you just want essentials default, right? Then what I like to do is go to window for painting and I want the navigator to show. So here's the navigator. I move that navigator up above color and swatches. It helps me move around my painting. I like the swatches view rather than the color mix view, so I switch that tab. I don't need properties and adjustments. Instead, I want to make layers on top of that. So I can see it really clearly, and I can close this gap because I don't need to see all the swatches all that clearly, and that gives a little bit more room for my navigator. And this is, this is new, the libraries, and I'm not going to be importing anything from libraries. So I can swoop that down. In fact, I'll move the libraries into here. It's all about organizing space. I do want to have my history. And then the other thing that's nice to have in the sidebar are your brush settings. All right. So this is now set up for painting. Now, if I go to workspace and I go to painting, You'll see it's similar to that, but not quite that, right? You have to switch between the navigator and the swatches, and they, they give you um, brush presets here instead of brush settings here. So I like my setup here for painting. The next thing I want to do is have my ruler showing on the side so I know in physical inches how big my workspace is. So I hit Command R or I could go up to View Rulers, right? Next, I want to go to, this is where you set your history states. Otherwise, it will only remember 50 steps back. I want to go to Photoshop, Preferences, Performance, and then say history states around 500. This is also where you can set how much of the running <coughs> memory, the RAM, is being utilized by Photoshop. And I might even up it a little bit. Maybe to about 75% of the, the whole computer ability. <laughs> because while I'm painting, I want it not to slow down. All right, now I have to reset up my brush but it will be there. So I go to my brush options, I scroll. Let's see. All the way to the bottom. Oh no, where are my brushes? All right, so because I'm going to do more refined painting, I get to make a new brush. Usually it would remember them, but they, it has categories and it has uh, different things that I could use. Let's actually try this. Let's try a different brush. But basically this is the same as my custom brush. I just want to see what settings it has. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, I just want to make it um, sensitive to size. Right now it's sensitive in other ways. So what do I do? I go to my brush settings and I go to shape dynamics. And I want the size jitter. That's what it is. The minimum diameter should not be quite so low. Play the angle jitter a little bit, play with the roundness. Yeah, this will be nice. All right. It's very broken up. It's textured. I'll play with this for a while. Okay, just to get used to it, I'm going to keep it large. I'm going to use it at about 70% opacity. And start getting used to it. It's a little big. So let's take it down.
And what I like about it is it's a little bit more textured than my other brushes. Which as I do more refined painting will leave more gaps. So I don't need to zoom in so much. Now you can do this to your own brushes by using the texture settings. And you can play with the contrast, the brightness, you know, how broken up it is. This has quite a bit of texture in it, which means I have to push a little bit harder to get it to fill in. And it's based on, on pin pressure. <clears throat> there we go. That's going to be a little bit more like what I'm used to, at least for this stage. And then I can play with that, the depth jitter, later on. So it's all about brush settings, not so much the brush design. Okay, this is all my base color layer. And generally there's no area on your painting, even your in your base color, because this isn't digital coloring, this isn't flat. You don't want any area that's just filled with one color, like this or this. So I'm trying to find two tones to kind of mix in each area. Think of it as duotoning, but it's more full spectrum, right? Because it's not just light and dark values, like I'm using purple and blue. And for his shirt, <laughs> and even his hair, I want to find these different tones to play with. And his skin. And white and black in painting shouldn't be solid white and black. They should be colors. And you get to choose what those are like. All right. Now, what am I missing here? I'm missing my reference. So let's build that in. Because otherwise I'm painting without reference. I'm painting kind of blind. And I can turn on my sketch again behind. It's on multiply mode, so it, but it's behind. So I'll, I'll always see it until I cover it up. And ultimately, this kill whitey phase, I want to cover it up eventually. Lots of painting, lots of layers. Right now, I only have color on one layer. So as a sandwich, it's not much of a sandwich at all. It's an open face sandwich. You have white bread, then I have um, color on top of that. Sketch and color, and I'm just going to keep layering up more and more. There's a lot over here I haven't filled in. Let me do that quick. If I have my brush settings the way I like, I can cover a lot of ground quickly. Nice. My sketch helps me know where shadows, I'm safe to do shadows. I'm stealing using the option button, a lot of shadows from myself. It's fun to throw in weird colors every once in a while, have them break up and then steal because I'm only painting at 70%. That means the colors mix with each other. Now this isn't my brush. This is a brush from Kyle's Ultimate Brushes, which is available online, I believe for free. He's a designer. But you can just be informed by it. The brush itself is nothing spectacular. It's the settings. So the brush is just this kind of textured shape, right? But it's the settings that make it really effective. Okay, so now as I go to refine painting, I'm gonna set up my reference material. I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush and start working on some of the details, figuring out the finish I want. Though I always like kind of the speed painting finish. It does quite a bit just on its own. All right. So I go to my reference. This is for George Bernard Shaw. 
and I open up the pic 